So I'm really quite excited because there's an exhibition outside here, outside my window in a huge tent for a conference of school teachers and educators. And Brady's been there already and said there's a fantastic exhibit of elements. So we're going down there to have a look together. So come on, I'm excited to see it. What we're attempting to do is to create a periodic table which has real lumps yes. of every element yes. in there and to find lumps of every element that are as beautiful as possible. Yes. Let's look at some. Well, um, one of my favourites is this one. You can probably work out from its position. It's osmium. Osmium. I, I, I melted that piece myself and um, I have melted much bigger pieces than that. But it's rather expensive because osmium, of course, is a a trace contaminant of platinum. You can produce a lovely, lovely solid lump that shows the blue colour. If you look closely, and particularly if you compare it to iridium, which is equally dense, or almost equally dense, can you see it's distinctly blue? I've never seen osmium like this before. I've seen the oxide, sort of whitish pout crystals, but this is fantastic. I won't steal it. <laughs> well, I'd be very happy to make a lump for you. In fact, I'll invite you to our lab and see some being melted, that which is quite a, quite a nice thing to see. Here, we, we, we produce a lot of elements in this form of a cylinder. And the reason yes. we've chosen this size is because of this. Now, this is one of my favorite lumps of matter in the world. And if you hold it, it it's astonishingly dense. So is this the tungsten? Yes. And so. that, that has exactly the same density as uranium. Yes and uh, gold. Yes. And so that's as close as you, most people will ever get to understanding what it feels like to hold a kilogram of gold. Yes. With Theodore Gray, um, I, I thought it would be wonderful to not just make a periodic table that hangs on the wall, but to make a periodic table which has a beautiful lump of every element in it. And so for the last five years, we've been building periodic tables and making them for universities and schools and chemistry companies and museums. Well, this is, this is quite an, uh, uh, a, a, a well-known element, silicon. Yeah. Um, but we've got here silicon in a variety of different forms. So here, for example, is silicon that I think has been reduced uh, from the oxide. Thallium. Uh, thallium is a very toxic element, and even a few milligrams of it can, can uh, poison you. Yes. Um, so what we've done is in case it in a solid block of uh, acrylic. Right. Well, I want to see gold. There we have a, a large surface area of gold, yes. although I have to admit the volume is not... It's a bit thin. Turn it on its side, though. But it's a nice piece. Yeah. How much is all the elements here worth? And then how much does it cost to buy one? Oh, well... Um, when it's all been made artistically? Well, the, the, let me first of all explain that gold is the a relatively cheap element in fact and if one was to compare its value with uh, this element which is quite close to it in the periodic table up a bit yes. uh, that's rhodium yes. now rhodium is 10 times more expensive than gold yes. and at one stage last year it became um, uh, as expensive as ten thousand dollars per ounce yes. um, so the cost of putting together a periodic table um, is is quite considerable yes. Um, we make lots of different periodic tables. The, the baby ones cost about two thousand dollars. Yes. The big ones cost about twenty thousand dollars. This one is. This is in the middle. Yeah. This one's probably around about ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Ten or fifteen thousand dollars. Now that I think is astatine. And um, actually, what's in there, of course, is not astatine because if we were looking at it, we wouldn't uh, be around yeah. for very yeah. much longer. But it's a piece of uranium ore, and they're on the nuclear decay series. There's a, an obscure side branch that does occasionally produce the odd atom of astatine. Yeah. So that's the best we can do. Bro bromine, of course, um, much easier to, to... I call this the Houdini element because almost however you package it, yeah. it escapes. I've not found a bottle that will contain it permanently. And even, even glass. Even glass. I'd like to see yeah. the copper and the phosphorus. 
Yes, Let's well, look at the phosphorus. Now, Why haven't you got white phosphorus? Well, uh, because we thought that was one step too far at the ASE conference to bring white phosphorus. We do have it, of course, in our lab in London. The, the most exciting part of building periodic tables, especially in a school or in a university, is um, it takes about four or five days to assemble all the different complicated pieces and build the cabinet and start filling them. And towards the end of that process, you get this most marvellous thing where people come up to the table. And if it's in America, it's just a constant chorus of oh that's so cool <laughs> and so to see the enthusiasm and uh, in many cases very experienced teachers and scientists come up and they've never seen a piece of hafnium or they've never seen a, even sometimes a piece of titanium and so it's really satisfying to uh, I guess engage people with the extraordinary elements that make up our world. So there's hafnium but well, thank you thank very, you very much. much indeed. And I think we will come yeah. and visit you in your well, lab. Well, a standing invitation and I can guarantee you some fireworks. Thank you.